DNA printers began development way back in the 1980s, and today they're being used in many labs around the world. They work by artificially synthesizing DNA by printing nucleotides one at a time. To be honest, it's very similar to how an inkjet printer works. But instead of ink, it prints using sugar, phosphate, and nitrogen. Using such a printer, you could theoretically print the DNA that stored your entire photo library or a backup of your computer hard drive. And yes, you could do that today. You could then store this tiny fragment of DNA inside an ampule, and it would last a very, very long time. Obviously, there's a catch, or we wouldn't be building thousands of square feet of data centers every year. It's money. It's always money, isn't it? DNA synthesis is expensive. Today, it costs anywhere from one to four thousand dollars per one megabyte of data written into DNA. But there is hope on the horizon. The cost of DNA synthesis is dropping each year, and is expected to fall precipitously over the next few years due to increased competition and rapid improvements in the technology. Just last year, a team in China invented a new technique that increases the speed of writing data into DNA by 350 times. They demonstrated this by successfully storing an ancient image of a Chinese tiger into DNA, then reversing the process to retrieve the digital image. I can envision a future, not very far off, where you can order a DNA printer small enough to sit on your desk, and for less than the price of a new iPhone, that can print vials of DNA, storing all your data that will still be intact hundreds of generations in the future. There could even be a future where we store all of our digital data, your photo library, your work, and everything else inside your own body somehow sitting in harmony in your cells beside your biological data. Which opens up a strange dystopia where someone could steal your data by taking your blood. And that would be a very strange world indeed.